Okay, thank you uh, very much, Professor, for your kind words for introduction, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to spend some time with you to introduce to you a exciting new tool of uh, Philips. It's called the Heart Model, which we introduced uh, at the ESC in London uh, end of August this year. And uh, with this tool, we uh, have the uh, intention to enable the 3D in a more fast, easy, and reproducible uh, way. So the following slides that I would like to show you uh, give you a little bit more of the background of this heart model, why we came to it, uh, functionality, and of course, evaluation of the heart model in different centers all over the world. Why 3D? I think uh, if you look at the past uh, years and if you visit some world congresses and look at the literatures, uh, lectures and follow the ASE guidelines, we see that the quantification is getting more towards the 3D to get the correct values. And mostly that is because, as you see on the slides, it avoids foreshortening and it avoids geometric assumptions in relation to 2D. So Dr. Tsang from the University of uh, Chicago, she has made some numerous papers uh, also on left ventricle quantification. And of course, left ventricle quantification, as been said before, is still most widely used to calculate ejection fraction. Um, but uh, it's most representative for normal heart and also in 2D. Uh, the disadvantage is the possible foreshortening of the apex. You also see that with regards to the left atrial quantification, that's getting more and more important as a determinant of cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. Now normally, when Philips uh, starts a new introduction or a new development, the first step is you, our customers. Uh, we talk to our customers and ask what would be beneficial for you to uh, be uh, more successful in your practice, that you're able to spend more time with your patients and not have to worry about technique. Um, so we'll have our centers all over the world and uh, there are three statements that we come up with which is regarding to improvement of depart departmental workflow. Some quantification tools, especially for 3D, are too complex and uh, we need a better reproducibility especially if you work with different uh, cardiologists or even residents in your own center. If they do their quantification, you probably have different uh, values. So, in our opinion, what you need, uh, talking with you, uh, is that uh, it would be nice if you could empower the user to utilize the 3D more routinely. Uh, and that the outcome that you get with 3D is validated by experts so that you know that the values that you get are truthful. It should also be easy to use and easy to learn because although we like to visit you all the time, but it's virtually impossible that we have to come every time to you and explain the tools to you. So for us, it's more important that it's also easy and fast to learn. It must be a fast tool and must be robust so that whenever somebody uses the tool, either you or your colleague or somebody else, you will get the same reproducible values. So that's why we come with this hard model. And with one button simplicity, we overcome actually the complexity and the time it takes to perform the 3D transthoracic echocardiography. This uh, tool automatically detects the segments and quantifies the left ventricle and left atrium. And it also provides you two uh, D views uh, and reproducible quantification. Now Philips is known uh, about its history of research and we already used heart models within our MRI and also CT. So this year uh, we come up with our heart model uh, for ultrasound. Just a small slide for how it uh, works. So with the anatomical knowledge that we have and you have, we made a kind of tool and we trained that tool to recognize the shape of the heart and its endometrial or myocardium borders. With this generic model used in our EPIC system, and because the software is only used with our EPIC system, and of course it can also be offline for our QLab uh, software, this generic model looks at the acquisition that you have made in 3D and start to reshape it towards the acquisition tool that you do. So it adapts the model to the acquired data set. 
This is a more in-depth line, so there you can see on the left side, uh, you see the hard model uh, overlaid on the acquired data set. It adapts to that data set, and then you still have the possibility to do some regional alignment if you do so uh, required. Now, we went all over the world with this uh, hard model tool also to train this tool to look at different and pathological and most used pathological uh, data sets. So dilated heart, banana shaped heart, sigmoid and normal shaped hearts. So that we are able to train that tool to be robust and easy to reproduce. This is a kind of world map where we had our centers in uh, Europe and America and Asia, uh, where we did our training of the tool, but also the clinical evaluation of the tool, uh, because of course we want to be sure and that's uh, the Philips uh, philosophy that we will not release in the future any software unless we can uh, support it with a scientific paper so that you know that the values that you get are, uh, are clinically tested. So with this hard model, as you said, we allow 3D echo to be incorporated into an everyday practice because it's, as I mentioned before, fast, easy and reproducible. Now, we made some clinical proof points with uh, Dr. Tsang at the University of Chicago, but also with Dr. Ivan Salgo. And with this heart model, we were able to show and clinically prove that we were re able to reduce the timing of the quantification with about 80% using this tool with regards to other tools uh, quantifying the left ventricle and left uh, atrium. What are the benefits for you? Because that's, of course, more important also. We give you with this tool an accurate and scientifically studied quantification tool. You'll have less clicks and no orientation input needed by the user. It's faster, even than conventional 2D biplane, and you will get some automated views, apical views and uh, short access views. So let me give you a short case, uh, which we demonstrated uh, at uh, the ESC. Um, and uh, give you a kind of update of a patient that uh, was done at a Spanish hospital, uh, a university hospital, and uh, uh, which was shown at uh, the workshops that we did at the ASC. So this was a 77-year-old male, a previous uh, smoker, uh, had a family history of ischemic heart disease, uh, diagnosed with non-ischemic dilated cardiomyopathy. Well, you can see for yourself, and his ECG showed the Lange uh, left uh, bundle block uh, branch, on the branch block. So this was his uh, uh, left ventricle uh, biplane with our X5. Now since it's, uh, the coming two days, this is going to be a kind of interactive uh, session. That's why you have all those computers in, uh, in front of you. So let's start with uh, the interactive. If you look at this uh, uh, view of the uh, left ventricle, just by eyeballing, who dares to say what kind of percentage of ejection fraction you expect? Yeah, show we? How much? 40%, I hear 40% here. Anyone else? Okay, let's take it with 40%. You have to get a little more interactive for these coming two days. Uh, so these are the parameters that was, uh, look, it was actually 42%, but you were very good. Um, and uh, these are the other assumptions in this, uh, in this tool. Yeah. So when they did a um, MRI, and I only show you this MRI slide, the MRI showed a left ventricle ejection fraction of 33%. Uh, of course, there was made also a long axis uh, uh, MRI but uh, the conclusion was for MRI was 33%. So let's take a look at uh, the hard model. Yeah. I'll just slide over this one. So this is your... So what the hard model does, so when I open this in the offline QLab, but again, you can also use it on the EPIC uh, system itself. So what the... Um, the software does now is what I showed you before. You have the generic model. It's now going to be overlaid on the acquired data set, and it's going to be adapted to that data set, 
and then it uh, computes the complete 3D volume that you have acquired, and in a matter of uh, about 20 seconds, you will get your uh, values displayed on the right side of the screen. So the model will give you automatically the three apical views and the three in end diastolic and end systolic, and on the right side, you see the left, uh, the volumes for end diastolic and end systolic. And if you remember well, and I can show back, uh, if you look at the end diastolic and end systolic volume, and also on the Jackson fraction, it shows 35%. So it's more consistent with, uh, with the MRI. Uh, and there, we of course, we also have a scientific paper for that, that the values that we get with the heart model are very consistent with the MRI values. Also, if you look at the end diastolic and end systolic volume, 299 and 195, if I go back to uh, the values uh, here, it's almost... Uh, similar to that. Just to show you a little bit on this one, what you can do here, you have also the short axis uh, view uh, here, and the apical views, and also have the possibility to do some regional editing if I want to, and I can also swirl around, so make a 360 degree, and as you can see, and follow the lines, you can see that the red line, uh, or the red vo really follows the endometrial uh, border. So if I accept uh, this uh, tool, I will get my, for the display of the heart model. Now, I was saying also on the first slide, I will tell you a little bit about the future. Um, as you can see, we now only have the left ventricle and left atrium, and of course, we got the question, when do we get the right ventricle and the right uh, atrium? Well, that is, uh, as of now, being uh, clinically tested as we did with the left ventricle and left atrium, and we hopefully will be able to add that software to the heart model next year. Uh, but again, as we said, it's the Phyllis philosophy that we want to make sure that the values that you get uh, are the right ones, so we want to have a clinical paper to support, that, uh, support those values. And for the rest, we, are, uh, we got already a lot of questions or a lot of uh, feedback during the workshop sessions at the ESC. And we are always open for suggestions from your side, how we can enrich this hard model uh, to be more effective in your uh, practice. Thank you for your attention.